Welcome back, everyone. I'm Don Brennan, and welcoming you once again to Friday Football Fever, presented by Ingman Marine. And let me tell you, you needed a boat tonight in certain places with all the rain coming down, especially Manatee County. A lot of cancellations, postponements, and delays. We'll tell you about those. Braden River got the regular season rolling last night with a 49-32 win over Castleton, Colorado, up at Disney's Wide World of Sports Complex. But our game of the week this week takes us to Port Charlotte, where it was relatively dry. Now, Port Charlotte hosting Northport in a neighborhood tete-a-tete, -tete, the dynamic duo of Devin Allen at quarterback and C.K. Poulos off to a hot start as they link up for a big gain early in the first quarter, but the Pirates defense getting to Allen right here with the big sack and forces a punt on the Bobcats' first drive. That's swarm tackling at its best there. Pirates ball now running back Mark Jean-Louis finding some room, but oh! There he goes, but he's stripped. He's stripped by Jalen Wine and falls right into the hands of the quarterback, Devin Allen, playing both ways. And the Bobcats were on the way. They were in business deep in territory. And then they hook up Allen with Andrew Bosmus to give the Bobcats the early lead. X point block, though, so it's 6 0 Northport early. But the Pirates strike back. And it's TJ Luther. And there's a spoiler alert. You're going to hear this guy's name a lot tonight. The rest of the season, I'm sure, for that matter, as he scampers to pay dirt to give Port Charlotte a nice 7-6 lead. Then the duo strike again. Look at this. Roll out by Devin Allen. Hits the opposite side. His favorite wide receiver, C.K. Pools, in stride right down the sidelines for a Bobcats touchdown. They regain the lead and get the two-point conversion to take that lead, 14-7. Port Charlotte, though, coming right back again. Quarterback Paul Barnes up the middle to tie the game at 14-all, still in the first quarter. And this is where things start to go south for the Bobcats. Another sack by the Pirates defense, starting to gain some momentum now. And Port Charlotte deep in Northport territory. Barnes back to throw. Is that Randy Moss? No, it's T.J. Luther looking like Randy Moss. Told you guys you'd be hearing his name a lot. Beautiful catch gives the Pirates the lead in the first half. And Shamar Harvey for the Pirates as he bulldozes in to extend the Port Charlotte lead. And the floodgates are open. Barnes looking to go deep to who? Come on, you guys know the answer, right? T.J. Luther, third touchdown of the half. And Port Charlotte taking commanding lead. The Pirates go on to win 54-26. Lyndon, Lyndon Blake and Ben Bobick were at the game, and Lyndon files this report. Thanks, Don. I know we've seen highlights. We've heard from the coaches. But one thing that I don't think the highlights show too well is how guys on both teams, Northport and Port Charlotte, played both sides of the ball the entire game. You had your number one quarterback for Northport playing free safety on defense. You had the running backs for Port Charlotte that are carrying the way of the team also on defense and making pretty big plays, too. So it was really an effort and kind of really cool to see on both sides how well the teams play together. I know the scoreboard showed that Port Charlotte was the dominant team tonight, but Northport had some very high points, too. They had some special teams plays that really stood out. And also, even the last minutes of the game, we still had players that were getting in the end zone. And Port Charlotte, they never took their starters out. So this is a team that never gave up and was able to score on the Pirates. And I think my favorite part about the entire night tonight down here in Port Charlotte was after the game, both teams came together. Now, this is a cross-city rivalry that hasn't been played in a couple of years, but both teams came together and they all said their piece, said a sweet prayer, and did a couple of handshakes. Everyone here knows each other. So it really was quite a, as CJ Pula said from Northport, it was a humbling experience out here tonight. Port Charlotte obviously coming out on top, but both teams can take something away from this game. Don? Excellent, Lyndon. Thank you. Bang up job down there, and what a game you had. Now, coming up, Riverview battles Booker. Manatee and Bayshore, they fought the rain and lightning, and the teams they had to play. A big rivalry game also after that. So, more Friday football fever coming up. Right, we get right back into it here on Friday Football Fever. Like I said, a lot of thunder, a lot of lightning, a lot of rain tonight, especially in Mantee County. St. Stephen's taking on Windermere Prep at their complex, and ticket sales were brisk. Look at the ladies doing a stiff business, and the cheerleaders, well, they were ready. Yeah, that's right. They know where they watch the football. Falcons were ready. They're coming in, ready, prep for Windermere Prep. Here they go. 
seemed like beautiful weather, and just as they were about to start, they get the call that lightning was in the area. Everybody has to take cover, scurrying for safety, including the Falcons mascot. Falcons had an offensive explosion last week. We were hoping to see some high-flying offense, but to no avail, the game was eventually canceled and will not be made up. Look at how sad that Falcon is. All right, a grudge match. Since Riverview's quarterback, Arthur Brantley, transferred from Booker over the summer, there he is. Now he's Riverview's quarterback. And there are the Rams, ready to rock and roll. Second play of the game from scrimmage. Booker's Talek, Talik, excuse me, Keaton keeps it all to himself, but he's hit by, hard by Riverview, forcing the fumble. The Rams take over near the Booker 20. Second play of this drive, the ensuing drive for Riverview. The handoff to Ali Boyce. Unbelievable. Look at that, dancing easily into the end zone. Riverview taking a 7-0 lead. Next drive for Riverview, and who else? Ali. This time from 52 yards out. His second touchdown run of the game makes it 14-0 Riverview. So we're still in the first. Brantley about to rear his head for his new team against his former team. He's going to connect right here, going through the air. 27-yard touchdown path was there. Excuse me, Zadarian Grable, 21-0 Riverview. They're scoring so much I can't even talk. Brantley, well, he could do it with his arm, he could do it with his legs. Look at this, watch what he does, Woo! Little Air Arthur, he airs it out, in sky high over the defender, finally tackled after a 35 yard gain down to the five yard line. Very next play, the handoff goes to Antron Thomas for the five yard touchdown run, 28 nothing Riverview, still in the first half, but then the Lightning would come after a 35 nothing lead with Riverview ahead. The Lightning delayed the game, then eventually was called and the Rams get the win, 35 nothing. Two state powers going at it at Joe Canan Field, Manatee and the Lakeland Dreadnoughts. Lakeland won, won the flip, they chose to defend. The Canes come charging out, they're ready to rock and roll. Irony Jackson gonna take the opening kickoff for Manatee. And this might have been the best play of the game. Beautiful, it looked like he might take it all the way. Sets Manatee up in good stead, but then they had four penalties in their first four or first two drives, so they had to punt in the first one, and they shut Lakeland down. Lakeland couldn't do anything on the Manatee defense. So here it is. Manatee gets the ball back. They try to do something. They're stuffed pretty much. Well, maybe a first down right there, but second drive, third play, and it's a screen. You see the lightning right there. As the play is in motion, all of a sudden the whistle's blowing, the horns are sounding, everybody's running for the hills. The game is eventually canceled with no makeup date set. Look at them run for look at them run for cover. Welcome back to Friday Football Fever here at SNN. I'm Don Brennan. I want to give a special thanks to Joey D's Chicago style eatery with several locations all over the Sun Coast. Last week we were in a crunch. We hadn't fed the crew. They were all starving, working all day, and they came through. They kept the kitchen open and made some pizzas last minute and sent them over to us. So thanks to Tommy over there at Joey D's Chicago style eatery. Now back to football. Bayshore at home tonight in Brewing Country, taking on Inverness Citrus or Citrus from Inverness. Who knows? There's the Bruin. He's got his dance going, and the Bruins, well, they had their dance going, too. About seven minutes before the game was called for lightning, the Bruins start off the game strong. Second set of down, number five, Miguel Rodriguez runs the ball 82 yards for the first touchdown of the night. I don't know if you noticed, but he left one of the defenders jockstrap on the grass. I'm going to check it out in slow motion, see these moves he just put on the Inverness defense. There's no defense for this. Oh, look at that. Oh, another one, and a nice block too. So, Rodriguez looking good, 82 yards for the touchdown. Then Citrus, the Hurricanes, they didn't get the ball back for too long. Number 53, RJ Bonus sacking the quarterback. Connor Bishop for the Hurricanes, look at it again. The game though was called, the Bruins were up 6-0. This game has been postponed, but with no makeup date either. Sarasota taking on Celebration at home. And the Sailors got off to a great start. Senior Tommy Batty scoring the second touchdown of the night. Look at him go. Sailors taking the lead, 13-0. The celebration quarterback, Tim Cantwell, after a little celebration for the Sailors. Right here. There you go. They celebrate. And celebration, well, they didn't celebrate too much tonight because Tim Cantwell going to try to run it, but he's sacked by Jimmy Joseph. 
of Sarasota. Then Tommy Batty going to throw for deep completion before it goes out of bounds on the play. But the home team continued to dominate on the field as the crowd kept cheering. The Sailors kept scoring. Second quarter, the score, 29-0 Sailors. And Sarasota's Brian Batty again takes it around in, beats the defense into the end zone, goes around the end for the touchdown. Batty going to carry another Yet another touchdown right here. They just keep giving them. The Sailors were going batty tonight. And then after that, Sailors kicker Tyler Hill, he wants in on the video action because the baddies are stealing it all. So he's going to make the kick. The Sailors go on to win 36 0. Go, Brian, go. Coach Riles coaching them up over there in Sarasota. The only game in Lee County tonight, Josh Vogelback. He was a quarterback when I covered Bishop Barreau back in the early 2000s. Now he's their head coach. They're hosting Cardinal Mooney. First quarter, Mooney's Jack Kosho wants it all, and he gets it. Miko Mays behind the defense for the 29-yard touchdown. The Cougars, 7-0 lead. Now with Corey Bessie out for the season with an injury, Cole Lane's going to take over a quarterback for the Vikings. But the snap is over his head and gift wrap for Mooney. Three plays later on third and goal, Kosho rolls out. To his right, and he'll just do it himself. You know, if you can't trust anybody else to do it yourself. Casio hits pay dirt to give the Cougars a 14-0 lead, and they beat Barreau tonight, 40-20. to That is a death rivalry, that those two. They're always battling. Now look at scores from around the Sun Coast.